1,548 earthquakes, unusual movement, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey, I hope you have had an awesome week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is October the 23rd, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from October the 15th through October the 21st. It was on this day in 1992, when a magnitude 5.2 struck Morocco. The epicenter was located about 43 miles south of Erichida and 242 miles southeast of Rabat. There was damage and at least two people were killed in the Risani area. The earthquake was felt throughout much of Morocco from FES to Marrakesh. This is what's happening. The Orionid meteor shower peaked this week between October the 20th and the 22nd. As many of you know, this particular meteor shower is the result of our awesome planet passing through the tail and coming in contact with debris from Halley's Comet. The expectation was set that this shower would be spectacular this year, however, I personally was unable to view the show as it was once again cloudy. If your area experienced clear skies and you were able to catch the show, please tell me about it. Post down below. Russian scientists have located a secret Nazi facility that was abandoned before the end of World War II. Constructed in 1942, the mysterious base, which was named Schutz Graber or Treasure Hunter, had remained lost for so long that many people believed it to be little more than a myth. The story goes that the Nazi scientists stationed there all had to evacuate the facility after eating polar bear meat that made them sick. Some have speculated that the team may have been deliberately poisoned however it is now believed that the meat was infected by a parasite. The Russian scientists who discovered the base have reported finding hundreds of objects left behind during the evacuation including shells and other World War II weapon fragments. One thing that still remains a mystery however is what the base was used for. With a name like Treasure Hunter it almost seems like there could be something important still hidden there. Whether the Russians will succeed in unraveling its secrets, however remains to be seen. You can view these articles and more at our Facebook page. Feel free to zoom over there when you have a moment. You can find the link in the description. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 1,548 earthquakes. This was once again a decrease when compared to the previous week. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 5,937. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 306 earthquakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 6.2 which struck Bouvet Island. For those interested, Bouvet Island is an uninhabited subantarctic island located in the South Atlantic Ocean. Interestingly enough, 93% is covered by a glacier and the center of the island is an ice-filled crater of an inactive volcano. Once again, we were presented with an incredibly interesting week. This was due in part to a series of powerful earthquakes like a 6.9 that struck our pals in Papua New Guinea and a 6.6 .6 that shook Indonesia. Not only those, but incredibly unusual earthquakes like a 3.6 that struck our neighbors in New Mexico. Let's break it down now. We continued to experience a steady decline in earthquakes following one of the most seismically interesting earthquake swarms in recent history. Even though the sheer number of earthquakes has dropped, we have seen an uptick in more powerful quakes. Last week, this boiled down to four earthquakes that exceeded a magnitude 6.0. The strongest experienced, a 6.9 that hit Papua New Guinea struck our planet on Sunday, October the 16th. The tremor was estimated at a depth of 22 miles on New Britain Island, 259 miles northeast of the capital Port Moresby. Australian seismologists said damage was highly unlikely with few inhabitants in the area. New Britain, the largest island of the Bismarck Archipelago, is east of mainland New Guinea and has a population of around 500,000 people. It lies on the 2,485-mile Pacific Australia Plate, which forms part of the Ring of Fire a hot spot for seismic activity due to friction between tectonic plates. Our friends in Indonesia experienced a powerful earthquake as well. This being the 6.6 .6 that struck on Wednesday the 19th. 
The epicenter of the quake was 20 miles deep and about 77 miles west-northwest of the Moluca Islands. No damage was reported and this earthquake did not generate a tsunami. Papua New Guinea once again made the list this past week with a 6.4 that struck on Saturday, October the 15th. This was a 6.4 that struck Kim. This earthquake struck at sea and did not cause any damage or injuries in surrounding habited areas. Finally, we turn our attention to the most impactful earthquake experienced this week. This being a 6.2 that struck Kiriyoshi, Japan on October the 21st. This strong 6.2 magnitude earthquake hit western Japan Friday, severely shaking the region and reportedly causing several injuries, damaging power lines and collapsing a house. The earthquake struck shortly after 2 p.m. in Totori Prefecture at a shallow depth of 6 miles. The U.S. Geological Survey initially pegged the quake's magnitude at 6.6 .6 before downgrading it. Public broadcasters quoted local officials as saying they had received reports that a house collapsed in the town of Iurahama, while fires broke out in another part of the prefecture, without giving details. Nearly 70,000 were temporarily left without power as the quake damaged power lines. Nuclear reactors in the area were deactivated but were not affected. For those unaware, Japan sits at the junction of four tectonic plates and experiences a number of relatively violent quakes every year, but rigid building codes and their strict enforcement mean even strong tremors often do little damage. As you would expect, the majority of earthquakes experienced fell along the ring of fire. 37% originated from California, care of the North American plate. The strongest registered was a 3.5 that struck Ridge Mark on Tuesday, October the 18th, and a 3.2 that shook Cobb on Thursday. For those interested, Cobb is known as a census-designated place in Lake County, California. Many of the community homes were destroyed in September 2015 by the Valley Fire. If you remember, the Valley Fire spread to 76,067 acres, killed four people, and destroyed 2,000 buildings. This fire went down in the history books as the third worst fire in California history. 28% of the earthquakes experienced struck our neighbors in Alaska, which also resides on the North American plate, by the way. The strongest registered was a 4.9 in Amukta Island. Amukta is a small yet mountainous island in the islands of four mountains group lying between the Fox Islands and the Andreanov Islands in the Aleutian Islands. Amukta is home of Mount Amukta and undissected strata volcano. Well-documented reports of historical Amukta volcanism are sparse, but not completely unheard of. In late August and early September, 1987, a commercial pilot observed a 6.5-mile-high eruption plume rising through cloud cover near Amukta Island. On September 4, another pilot observed a small dark ash plume issuing from the summit of Amukta. On September 18, Yet another pilot reported a 984-foot-high ash plume. Anyways, it is amazing that just two locations along the Ring of Fire, California and Alaska, accounted for 65% of the earthquakes experienced. As far as unusual earthquake activity is concerned, we turn our attention to Laguna, New Mexico. On Thursday, October the 20th, we experienced a rather powerful magnitude 3.6 earthquake. Earthquakes are rare in the land of enchantment. In fact, within the past 12 months, we have only registered 15. What I found particularly interesting about this earthquake is, just how little information there is about it. I found one report online, which appeared to be automatically created by a computer algorithm. This could very well be due to the epicenter being outside of habited areas, but this simply seems weird to me that news agencies wouldn't report on something so rare. With that being said, what are your thoughts on this folks? Another area of interest lies along the North American Craton. This week we registered several earthquakes along the eastern limb in locations like Etowah, Greenback, Venur, and Lenoir City, Tennessee. The average magnitude for these quakes was only 1.9. This is about double the activity we normally experience during a seven-day period. The New Madrid Seismic Fault experienced movement as well. This was split between a 1.7 in Lilburn, Missouri a 1.4 in Ridgely, Tennessee, and two earthquakes, a 1.4 and a 1.2, that hit New Madrid. The South American plate experienced some movement. The strongest earthquake experienced was a magnitude 5 that struck Peru on Sunday the 16th. 
the Eurasian plate continues to be hammered with earthquakes. Specifically, Rhodotopian, Greece. This area clocked in 24, with the strongest being a 5.5 that struck on the 15th. This quake hit northern Greece, near the city of Ioannina at 11.14 p.m. local time according to the Athens Institute of Geodynamics. Fortunately, there have been no reports of damage or injuries. Earthquakes have historically caused widespread damage across central and southern Greece, Cyprus, Sicily and other neighboring regions. In closing, it appears as though earthquake activity is in the process of ramping up along the Pacific, Australian, and Eurasian plates. If this week is like last, we are in for quite an interesting week. And that's it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Feel free to post about anything that is on your mind. Make certain to like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. Have a great day, okay?